Welcome to 2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce. Glad to have you with us. It's Tuesday Hoops, and it's next. It'll be Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers facing off against Blake Griffin and the Los Angeles Clippers. And now let's get courtside with Kevin Harlan, who's all ready to get things going in Los Angeles. It's the Lakers in a Western Conference matchup. Great to be with you. This is Kevin Harlow here with Steve Curry, Clark Cohen, as 2K Sports presents this Tuesday afternoon broadcast of the NBA. A look here at the Lakers starting group presented by State Farm. Powell and Bynum filling up the middle. Fisher and Kobe man the backcourt. And it's our test in at the small forward position. And for the Clippers, Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, they're inside. Chauncey Billups out there with Chris Paul. And it's Butler in at the three. The three from Billups. And that one's good. Billups has got his team on the board to start the game for the Clippers. Well, the Clippers are such a young, exciting team. I mean, last season, they went 23-18 and 18 at home at the Staples Center. This is a team with a very bright future, and they'd like to establish that home court. Kobe with the steal. He's up, takes it up for the stuff. What? Tell you what, there he is doing exactly what he does best. And Clark, his best is about as good as it gets. Well, mm -hmm. Definitely when it comes to elevating, we know that. For those Los Angeles fans, Clark, the emergence of Blake Griffin as a superstar has to be a cause for celebration. Steve talked about their winning record at home, over 500. Uh, I've got this team circled. What about you? Yeah, I do too, and part of the reason is the guy in the middle. I mean, there's a feeling this team is only going to get better, and Griffin may quickly become L.A.'s most dominant basketball player. He's certainly already perhaps the most hyped and oh, yeah. closing in on maybe as popular as, as Kobe Bryant in some sort. He's something else. Yeah, he's special to watch. I thought Gasol got up to such a fast start last season, but he, he might have worn down as the season went on. He was asked to play big minutes, especially early when Andrew Bynum was out with the injury. Ryan Gomes has checked in for Karan Butler. That's also good, so he hits both free throws. And then, of course, uh, for Paul Gasol in the playoffs, a lot of disappointment with his play, Clark. Uh, game in fact with two where he even got booed at the Staples Center. Yeah, you never like to see that, but he clearly did struggle in the playoffs and he's extremely gifted, but some have tended to try to question his mental toughness or killer instinct and I quite honestly think it's unfair. He's got a disposition and demeanor that lends itself to that kind of criticism, but anytime you can perform the way he has, that's impressive and it actually helps him the fact that he's got a deferring type of personality to be an ideal number two guy for the Lakers with Kobe Bryant being the obvious lead dog there. So it's a good fit, I think. That's interesting. Earlier, Doris Burke spoke with head coach Mike Brown. And uh, what did you find out, Doris? Guys, one of the areas he believes they can exploit today is on the offensive glass. He said, we've got guys who can give them fits on the boards. He's ex a lot of second chance opportunities which can produce major points opportunities inside guys thanks for that doris rebounding certainly the key topic now kevin you know that and we've seen so many games big games won and lost on the backboard you have to rebound for four. and the lakers making a change here barnes has checked in Here is Billups. Picked up by Kobe. The open shot, Billups. Cans the shot with nobody near him. Billups has got five points so far. Vinny Del Negro didn't have an easy go of it leading the way for the Clippers in his first year coaching that team, but he was able to get them to up their win total, and that's something to build off of. Clippers trail by three. And Gomes kicks the ball. Some nice passing. 
Now here's Billups. Five points in the game. Goes up on the wing, and the Clippers getting another bucket right there. Well, getting back to Del Negro Park, you know, this is a team that has a lot of young talent. You got Blake Griffin to build around, but it, it's had a losing culture for so long. So this is a tough job. I mean, he's got to really change their style, get them to buy into playing defense and playing together, and try to build some momentum with a franchise that really never has had it. You know, he's definitely a catalyst for their offense, guys. I mean, he is so talented, he really causes problems for the other team's defense. And taken away by Paul. Boy, the defense read that one beautifully. Here's Gomes. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. It's going to be on Kobe Bryant. Nice time to use that foul to stop the layup. You know, if you can save just one point, that foul was the right move. Well, you know, a recent stat says that in the last 15 years, the Lakers are on average the best offense in the NBA. But in crunch time, ironically, they fall to around 12th best offensive. Not nearly as effective. Shot's good. Living a little room service dime with that dish. The Clippers trail. From deep, Phillips. And we'll show that one drops. Phillips has got 13. Going back to the Lakers and they're left down as far as crunch time offense goes. Good point by you. Steve, you take it now. Why do you think that's so? Well, I think Kobe's not the player that he once was, Kevin. I mean, he's not as athletic. He's not uh, as capable as he used to be getting shots off uh, against any type of defense. And uh, I think the rest of the guys maybe lost their confidence in themselves as a result. Guys, no one team gaining control early on. Give and take, back and forth, the whole way thus far. Yeah, six lead changes already, and as Rasheed Wallace once said, both teams playing hard, my man. He made sure everybody saw all that slam Kevin stayed on the rim for a little while extra <laughs> maybe he wanted to give his legs a little rest there Clark there's 38 seconds left here in the first quarter outside Butler and here is Billups no good with the layup he lost his focus there guys that's a shot he should make tipped away Backing down is Bryant. Williams picks him up. Here's Gasol. That's in. Coming off an assist by Kobe. Seven points for Paul Gasol. And here comes Billups. He's got 15 over Barnes. And Chauncey Billups again. Right out of the gate. Just filling it up. Both teams are, guys. I mean, points coming fast and furious. And here's Kobe for three. And another three for the Lakers. Free-flowing first quarter. Great scoring through one. Lakers on top. the second quarter getting ready to start up Lakers leading by five Kobe Bryant now in his 16th season and what has been one of the great careers in NBA history he's battling age now but still a very very productive player in a moment now to reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade all fueled up for the second quarter of basketball and the Clippers looking at who they've got they've got Foy Craig Smith is out there with Griffin, and it's Karan Buck, and it's Williams at the point. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Kevin, Pau Gasol grew up in the diverse, artistic town of Barcelona, Spain, and his interests reflect that. A lover of opera, fine arts, an avid reader, a former med school student. He's an intellectual. 
but Gasol's multifaceted interests are a concern for some in L.A., who might prefer him to have the single-minded focus on basketball of his teammate Kobe Bryant. Gasol said, I don't like to be in a little box or in a bigger box. I just like to be open. Interesting stuff, guys. Thank you, Doris. And I don't think Gasol's off-the-court interest should be a concern. I mean, really, he was the key to them winning their last two titles when you look at it. Hey, you know, winning three in a row is a lot harder than people realize. I think the Lakers are still very dangerous, and Gasol is a big reason why. Here's Williams. You know, it may not sound like much, but the Clippers managed to go 19 and 33 against the Western Conference last season. That was a solid four-game improvement, though, over the prior season. Lakers leading by five. Barnes with it. And another three for the Lakers. Clark, he just rattled off that nice record against the West. Their best mark, uh, Steve, in the last three seasons. Mm -hmm. But still the third worst overall record in the West. I mean, it, it is no easy task trying to move your way up this Western Conference. Here's Griffin following the three by the Lakers. Shoots off the step back. And again, the Clippers good for two. He has so much offensive imagination. Always seems like he's ready to try something new. From 20 feet out, and the Lakers check on two more. After going scoreless in the first, he's really found a way to turn it on here in the second quarter. Hey, watch outside. Fisher against Williams, over Johnson, and the Clippers getting another bucket right there. And now six of their last ten points from mid-range. Yeah, jump shot really serving these guys pretty well. It's tipped. Boy, good anticipation. A solid play to pick off that entry pass. And again, it's Mo Williams. Williams has got six. Defense wasn't able... ...to get back fast enough to contest. Well, they were caught flat-footed after committing the turnover that time, guys. So for the Clippers, DeAndre Jordan's check in for Smith. Gomes comes in for Karan Button. And Chauncey Billups is subbed in for Randy Ford. Steve Blake's checked in for the Lakers. Here's Blake. Williams picks him up. Back and down. Clippers trail by four. Jordan inside, covered by Barnes. Terrific defense at the rim. They got right in his path. You know, that's part of what great defenders do. They get not only in your path, but in your head a little bit, too. I really don't like what I'm seeing their last couple of possessions, Kevin. That's two turnovers in a row. Careless turnovers at that. Now, they're getting a little casual with the ball. They've got to nip that in the bud right now. You know, Kevin, one of the things that sometimes overlooked with Billups, he's strong at 6'3 and 200 pounds plus, but he's an excellent low post player for a guard. Blake is whistled for reaching in. That is his first foul of the game. And some changes here for the Lakers. How Gasol's checked in for Smith. Our test comes in for Matt Barnes. And Kobe is subbed in for Johnson. 137 left here in the second. Williams against Gasol. Outside Griffin. Gasol against Williams. Gets it to go. Williams has got eight. And Clark, you talk about Billups' great post-up ability. He may be slowing down with age, but Steve, that post-up game of his is timeless. Yeah, 6'3", uh, you know, as, as Clark mentioned, a uh, really strong body. And he's got good footwork. Great touch. Just a, a good knack for scoring. He's, he's uh, one of the better post-up point guards in the NBA today. Now let's send it to Doris from the sideline. Hey, Kevin, well, the Clippers traded away their first-round pick last season to the Cavs. At the time, because the draft was not supposed to be that great, they didn't think too highly of it, saying they didn't see anyone they particularly thought of that high in the draft. 
but it ended up being the number one overall selection. We'll see how that pick pans out over the next several years, guys. Great. Thanks for the report, Doris. You know, it certainly isn't paying off in the short term. Well, obviously, you know, after the fact, you say, well, they should have kept the pick. They'd either have Derek Williams or Kyrie Irving right now, but it's too late now. And at the time, they were just trying to save money, and they felt like they had their positions covered. Lakers leading by three. Artez dishes to Kobe. Over Billups. And the Lakers tack on two more. Boy, he's been so cool out there. Composed, never rattled. I mean, a very steady contributor to the offense. Paul kicks to Billups. From downtown, good, and Paul gets the assist. Billups has got five points now in the quarter. Wow, he is just bearing shot after shot from long range. And he'll keep calling and begging for the ball, I'm sure. And here's Smith. Smart call here. They'll play for him. And he slams it home. Here's the replay on the Spike Slam King. That is just so sweet. I mean, power and skill combined to give us that reverse. like that come from only from players like him apparently back to our test with one on the clock and the lakers check on two more great matchup here this game has gone back and forth multiple lead changes just a great game guys and we'll be right back here in los angeles Welcome to the HP Halftime Report. I'm Damon Bruce with a close contest going on out at Staples Center. The Lakers have been battling. A dominant offensive display through two quarters. They're scoring efficiently. Kobe's been lights out in the first two quarters. Seems like everything's falling for him. Not sure if he even knows how to miss. And not to be outdone, the Clippers also giving it their all. Their bench has given them a huge lift offensively. Coming up big. Chauncey Billups has been lights out in the first two quarters. The buckets are coming for him at a tremendous rate. He's really dialed in. Checking out the point leaders from both teams in this game. You know they're going to bring it again in the second half. And now back to the game in Los Angeles. Glad to have you with us. There you get a view of L.A. Live and the Staples Center as we return to action here in Los Angeles. Here's Fisher. And one of the things you like about the Lakers, their ability to go out on the road and win. In fact, last season, they were 27 and 14 away from Staples Center. So for the Lakers right now, Fisher and Kobe man the backcourt. Our test and pound in the forward slots. And it's Bynum at the center filling out the middle. Kobe with the bucket. And the Lakers, Clark, a smart veteran team, we know that. How much of an asset is that to winning on the road? You can't overstate it. I mean, it's really huge, Kevin. Keeping your composure, staying focused, understanding what's coming and what you need to do to seize games on the road. Some folks call it that killer instinct. Um, and those are the things you have to be able to do. And the Lakers, quite honestly, a terrific example of all of that. And you know, despite the number of turnovers, Kevin, they still got the lead here. Well, eventually, guys, you know, those mistakes will come back and haunt you. So they've got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Beyond the arc, and another three for the Lakers. And Kobe Bryant, along with Carmelo Anthony, I think are the two most complete scorers in this league. They can find a way to get the ball in the basket from so many different ways. Now here's Billups. He's got 26. Al Gasol. Well, fade away. And again, it's the Lakers. Well, Stevie talked about Kobe's offensive virtuosity. You can Google that name if you want to out there. You know, you name most any way that exists to put the ball in the bucket. I think he's master. I, I, I don't think there's a shot that's been made that he hasn't done and done well. Well, he's a master scorer. I mean, that's how you would tie him. And that includes every way, but it's the footwork. We talked about the basics, the little things. 
great anticipation offensively, and he's always in aggressive mode. And with his physical ability and the fundamentals master, he's special. I like what you said about the footwork. There's a great story about when Kobe and LeBron got together for an all-star game at one of their USA teams over the past, you know, five, six years. And the, the knock on LeBron had always been that he really didn't pay attention to detail. This kind of shot and wasn't, there was no pattern to his practice, mm -hmm. individual practice habits. And he watched Kobe and he learned from them. And now LeBron is the one teaching younger players. Isn't that something? Yeah, it's that's exactly down. how it should be. Yeah. Well, it's too bad after such an efficient first half, he's starting to turn the ball over here in the second. And Butler backing him in. Lobs it up there. Oh, oh man! Down oh, a monster throw down. Wow! Boom! A superb alley-oop there. Prime time. Well, they had that one standing by, just, just waiting to pull it out. Now, there's definitely a sense of understanding between those two teammates, that's for sure. Grant hits the outside fadeaway. Kobe's got 27. Well, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. Bring an extra defender and force somebody else to beat you. Los Angeles calls timeout. Well, anytime you see the Clippers take on the Lakers, it's an interesting energy to the game. The crowd here at Staples Center divided, and uh, everybody wearing different colors as well. And the Clippers making a change here. Moon's checked in. The Lakers also making some changes. Derek Carriker, he's checked in for Bynum. And Matt Barnes is subbed in for Ron Artest. Here's Paul. Stolen by Fisher. Good defense there. He was just waiting for that one. They've got to push it. On the wing, Kobe Bryant again. And it's a six-point lead. Laker lead. Well, you know, the relationship between the Laker fans and the Clipper fans is an interesting one. They both play in the same town, same arena, so... Which team you choose to root for, I guess, in some ways, says something about you as a person or a fan. Yeah, well, in some circles, that is the case. I mean, the Clippers fans usually really resent the Laker fans. I mean, there's some <laughs> contention between those two pockets of fans. Um, you think they're a little snobby and a little elitist, if you will. And then Laker fans basically consider Clippers fans as maybe um, hopeless crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... That's a recipe for a lot of head button. Boy, I like the fluidity I'm seeing from them on offense. It's a thing of beauty. Fun to watch. Yeah, it is. They're moving the ball well, finding the open man, making that extra pass. They're playing very unselfishly right now. So for the Clippers, Lugzo comes in for Jamario Moon. And it's Warren in for Blake Griffin. The Lakers also changing it up. Smith comes in for Pau Gasol. And Steve Blake is subbed in for Derek Fisher. Leaner from distance. Good, he hits the jump shot. 31 points for Kobe Bryant. Well, they've done a lot of their damage from mid-range here, guys. I mean, knocking down those shots with regularity. Yeah, how about eight of their last 10 points, guys, coming off that mid-range area jump shot. So, shows you, you don't have to be at the rim to score. And Kobe throws it down. It's basically been all him. I mean, he scored most of the points himself. Forty-three seconds left to play in the third. Los Angeles calls timeout. You got to keep everybody on the same page. They need to get their heads together. That's the goal. You know, for so long we've seen the Lakers coast into the playoffs, put themselves in a tight spot, and then find a way out of it. But in that series versus Dallas in last season's playoffs, they really looked like a tired and overmatched team. 
Johnson. He's checked in for the Lakers. Here's Billups. 26 points for him. For the three. That's good. Phillips has got seven points here in this quarter. And for the Lakers, Kobe said, Clark, after that series, we've been playing with fire the last three years. Now, we finally got what we deserve. Uh, Steve, that is a very interesting quote. Uh, take it apart for us and, and delve into it. Well, I think the Lakers had been to the finals for three straight years, and I think they were worn out emotionally. And uh, for a couple of those playoff series over the years, they, they did uh, play with fire and get away with it. Uh, not last year. Dallas just destroyed them. And I think the Lakers just were tired of both. Physically and mentally. Here's Bill. Looking for his first bucket of the game. Deflected. Stolen by Bloodsoe. Here's Paul. Blocked. Eyes again. We end the third quarter, a great game. Both teams playing well. You look at Kobe Bryant in this game. I mean, he has been everywhere. That's one thing to get to the rim, and it's another to finish when you get there. I mean, he's done both so far. Yeah, through the first three quarters, I mean, he's done a great job of being able to complete plays at the rim, finishing drives nicely. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. Check in with Doris Burke for our Sprite Spark of the Game. Doris? Hi, guys. Well, it was the stretch by the Lakers that garners the Sprite Spark today. Points have been few and far between against this defense, and it's why they keep adding to their lead. They are in complete control as we head to the fourth, guys. Okay, Doris, thank you. And that run, Clark, really changed the complexion of this game. Yeah, it sure did. I thought it stirred something up in them that got them on a good run. Yeah, got the ball rolling for them, and they were able to keep it going from there, guys. So with Billups on the bench, Razor's on the floor now for Vinny Del Negro. Griffin is out there with Moon. Then it's Chris Paul. Then it's Willie Warren. And it's Bledsoe in at the three spot. Backing down is Bryant. The jump hook. Clippers trail by five. Oh, and the dunk by Moon. Now that is a spectacular dunk. I mean, you got the glide, you got the power. the full pack all of it i mean look how high he got you just don't see that kind of elevation every day that was our sprite slam cam on the replay nice job by the camera crew fight it, fight it, fight it. now here's kobe he's guarded closely no good on the triple 
Now that's a clinical example of how to get up into a shooter, how to close out on a great shooter. Any effort short of that, and the shot is probably going down. Yep, really showing his ability to bother the long-distance shot. No contact either. Well, the Pacific Division only had one playoff team a year ago. That was the Lakers. Uh, but despite the division softening up, the Clippers really didn't do that well in divisional play. Seven wins, nine losses. Derek Fisher's checked in for Steve Blake. Well, he split his free throws, but if they can get a stop here, they've still got a chance. Here's Kobe, and the layup's good off the glass. Kobe's got... Got 35 in the game. See, we're talking about the Pacific Division, not the strongest it's ever been. Uh, the Clark High sense is kind of getting better. What do you think? Yeah, Kevin, I agree with you. I mean, the Clippers, the Warriors, the Kings, all young with a considerable upside. I think the question would be, can they turn that potential into production? You don't want to have potential forever. At some point, you want to see that potential realized. You're right. Wasted no time on that one. Coming back with a three of their own. I like that. Good response. Yeah, I agree with you. See, this is a team that will not back down. I mean, I'm not surprised to see them answer that way. And Griffin backs in with the shot. And again, the Clippers good for two. Hey, okay, what? It has been all offense, all game long. You know what? This is really fun to watch, guys. I mean, as a coach, though, this is when you want to just harness this energy and bottle it up and ride it all the way. And taken away by Paul. Well, he's showing off his defensive instincts by making plays just like that. Here's Warren. He nails it. And we're tied up. It really caused a lot of trouble with their defense. And it's paying dividends for them at the other end. Well, it's the old saying. Good defense leads to good offense. And no question that's the case right now. And that one's good from Fisher. He's such a clutch shooter, Kevin. He just lives for the big shot. And the Clippers have possession. Trailing by two. Los Angeles calls timeout. I was able to listen in on what Vinny Del Negro had to say to his team. He said to them, show me you want it more than they do. I need your best effort from here till the final buzzer. The W is there. You guys just go get it. And as always, Doris, thank you. Here's what the Clippers are going with right now. DeAndre Jordan's checked in for Moon. Phillips comes in for Eric Bledsoe. And Mo Rogan subbed in for Willie Warren. Phillips, no good. And here's Los Angeles. Here's our test. He feeds it to Blake. And Bynum backing in. He's picked up by Jordan. The shot's good from Bynum. Now it's a four-point leg. Guys, that's what he does. I mean, he excels at getting to the rim. Outside, Williams. Alton defending. There's the feed to Milkis. Takes a three. Good. Great play by Williams. He's set up. Williams has got three assists now in this one. Once again, he's able to knock down the long range jump. He's on the back. That's a brilliant game. And some changes here for the Lakers. Kobe comes in for Luke Walton. And there Fisher is up in for Steve Here's Kobe. And again, it's the Lakers. He's really been the focus of the offensive game plan. And he's come through for his team as they've built this lead. Driven down low. Working on this off. And that one's just working. That is an elegant move to drop in the floor to their guys. On the arm. And the Lakers lead by four. We have seen the intensity picked up big time here in the second half. Well, you can feel the desire for both teams. They really want to win this game. Here's Phillips. He's covered by Fisher. Phillips is going to be the lead slam. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to ask the best assist 
Only a teammate could get the perfect time. I mean, that's what you need you know, to make that kind of a connection. And take a look at my table. Turn over the story. I'm going to get out of here. But you've got to remove some attention. I got to have such a great feel to the ball to get a thing real like that to go.
goes up from the top of the key. This win class with respectable performances on both ends of the floor. I, mean, I think it was just really a nice overall effort, oh, Kevin. And then it'll be for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burris. This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on TK Sports. And now, we present the Jordan player of the game, Kobe Bryant.